Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and today guys, I'm very proud to introduce a new sponsor of the Archie Luxury and the Paul Pruder channels. Who am I talking about? Whatshopping.com, whatshopping.com, whatshopping.com. Check them out, guys. Jump online, check out whatshopping.com. These guys here have been in business since 2017. Worldwide shipping and distribution. Over 10,000 wristwatches in inventory. Stock in hand and 90 plus different brands, new and pre-owned. Now, the good thing about WatchShopping.com, trusted by over 4,000 reviews on Chrono24 and Trustpilot. Your one-stop shop to buy any watch your heart desires. Please, guys, check out WatchShopping.com, WatchShopping.com, WatchShopping.com. I'm Archie Luxury, and check out WatchShopping.com. Hi guys, Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluto channel. Today guys, I am doing a urgent paid review. This is paid review 22QA40. Quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing my Z Blue with the BMW cufflinks. This is an urgent paid review. Quite an interesting one, this one here. It's an interesting collection. Uh, and I got to tell you, that is a cool way to go. Cool way to go. This is for, what's his name? I don't know if he wants to be. Okay. Let's just go jump straight in here. Here we go. I, hi, Arch. I'm a big fan of your channel and have been watching since 2015 when I developed an interest in mechanical watches. I was oblivious to the watch culture, knew nothing about watches and their history before 2015. I have a cousin who talked me into looking, getting a mechanical watch and after my first purchase, which was the Seiko XKX009, I've been hooked ever since. I was hesitant to jump initially because of the prices and not understanding why anyone would pay these high prices. For a watch, however, once you experience wearing a quality piece, this hobby can become very addicting. So, I must credit you and my cousin as my biggest influences and educators that sparked my love for watches today. As you will see from my collection, I gradually started to spend more money on each purchase. There was sticker shock in the beginning. I'm a 41-year-old man living in Dallas, Texas, that is married with a son that graduates high school this year, and God willing, he goes to college. I generally need to save for a watch, or if I have a great year and get a big bonus, I will treat myself for my hard work with a Swiss timepiece. I'm in the IT cloud solutions business, and have been in the technology field for the last decade, working at two great companies. Now enough of the background, let's jump into the fun, the fun stuff, my collection. Here are the watches in the order that I purchased them. Number one, we've got the Seiko XKX009 2015. The next piece was a Tag Heuer Formula One Caliber 5 41 mils 2015. Next piece was a Tag Heuer Formula One Caliber 6 43 mils. That was in 2017. Then we had a Breitling Colt. Breitling Colt, 44 mil in 2019. Then we went Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean, 43.5 mils in 2020. Then we got Rolex Oyster Perpetual 41, 2021. And then we've gone for a Cartier Santos Large, 2022. That's this year. All of these watches except the Cartier were purchased brand new from the grey market. Uh, I got them, he said, Joma Shop and Watch Max X. I got them all at discount except for the Oyster Perpetual, of course. The Cartier Santos I ordered directly off Cartier's website. I love all my watches and they all have meaning to me. I know you may say my watches are turds, especially the tags, but I don't plan on selling anything. 
My cousin also makes fun of my tags and was the one telling me, every man should own a Rolex. That's why I bit the bullet and purchased the OP41. I love the OP41, but my favorite watch is the Planet Ocean. I also bought my wife a Rolex Oyster Perpetual 28 mil as well, which she loves, and I will eventually get her a two-tone Datejust. I recently put a rubber strap on my Formula One, but I mostly wear it with the bracelet. I've worked from home for the last two years because of the pandemic, but I wear my watches in the house, and I like to match the dial with the outfit I'm wearing. I'm a polo or button-down shirt with khakis type of guy during the week and hoodie or t-shirt and jeans on the weekend. I rarely get dressed up and I feel all my watches fit my personality and style. I enjoy bigger watches with wrist presence. As far as what I would like to add to my collection in the future, my hope is to get an Amiga Speedmaster Professional Man on the Moon for my birthday in June. I would eventually love to add a Rolex Datejust on a Jubilee bracelet with a blue dial. I'm on the waiting list, but not confident I will get the call. And I don't want to pay well above retail for another Rolex when there are so many other great options to choose from. My Grail watch is the Rolex Skydweller, but out of my budget. I would love to hear your honest thoughts on my collection and any recommendations on future pieces to add in the years to come. I would like to hear what you think I should add from a Rolex perspective, but also hear about some other iconic pieces you recommend. Uh, that included, I've sent you uh, photos of the watches, a $100 contribution. I will continue to support your channel and I wish you continued success and health. So there we go. That's a beautiful, beautiful email. Beautiful man. So let's have a look at the nitty gritty. Firstly, what do I think of his collection? What an interesting, interesting start there. He started, got a Seiko XKX009. Then he went into the tag Hoyers. I gotta be totally honest. I have been extremely brutal on tag Hoyer. And you know what? I don't necessarily think I'd buy a tag unless it was like the heritage models, like a Monaco, a Silverstream, Carrera, but I respect Tag's place. I've actually done a complete 180, and I think they, they, they hold a pretty good place because we can't just jump into this hobby with Rolex, well, especially now with the supply chains. So, Getting the tags, it tells your story. And in many ways, i got to tell you, I'm a bit sad I don't have my early watches. You know, when I got a Rolex 1016 Explorer 1 in 1990, I gave my Omega Seamaster Quartz to my dad. I didn't think you'd actually collect these things or have multiple watches. Why would you need that? So it is a bit, I'm a bit sad I got rid of them. So I respect your, your choices there. All I would say is I wouldn't be adding any more unless it was like the Monaco, Steve McQueen, something like that. But I don't think that's terribly wrong. They're a decent Swiss watch. Okay, they're using generic movements. Okay, okay, okay. So what? So what? But they're decent and, and we had some good progression the brightling colt again the brightling colt is one of these watches which i i don't necessarily love the brightling colt it's kind of the cheapy in the range it's the cheapy brightling i personally prefer the navi timer or the brightling super ocean heritage i think those are much better watches but you know what biggest company chooses Beggars can't be choosers. You can only do what you can do, and that is life. So, Breitling Colt. And then, interestingly enough, you got the Planet Ocean. That's a great watch. Planet Ocean is a great watch. It's a heavy-duty watch. It's not a base model Amiga. It's actually quite up there. And I'm so pleased. You got an Oyster Perpetual... Rolex, 41 mil. 
Well done. They are super expensive now. And then to round off the collection, we've got a Cartier. And you know what? Yes, uh, Cartier, you know, used to be able to get Cartier at a discount. I recently bought my wife a Cartier Tank Francais steel for her birthday. And I tried to, sh uh, firstly, I tried to buy one second hand and I wasn't convinced it was real. Then I sent it back. I got one from Cartier, no discount. But you know what? It was a great experience. I wouldn't recommend it. You're not going to certainly not going to make any money doing that. But you know what? It was it was an enjoyable thing. My wife always wanted the tank Francais. So it's not about me. It's about what she wanted. So I got to be totally honest with you. I really do like your collection. The only thing I would say to you is please listen to me. You do need to add more Rolex. Rolex is quality. Okay, it's a good foundation. What would I be adding? That's a good question. What would I be adding? I think if you've got a simple three-hander, quick wristwatch check, I'm wearing my Z Blue. That's a three-hander. No date, no functions, just a very... So you've got an Oyster Perpetual, very similar. I would try, I reckon the best bank per buck would be a 42 mil Explorer 2. Black dial, white dial, you know what? I'd go for black dial because it's cheaper. Okay, the white dial is now a premium. I'd buy the one that's not the premium. Okay, I want the deal. And you know what? I'll be honest with you. I chose the white polar one, not because I looked at it for hours and said this is cooler. It was cheaper. Okay, that's it. I didn't didn't matter white or black dial. I got to be honest with you. I really actually love white dials. And on the Sky Dweller, I love the white dial Sky Dweller. Out of all the Sky Dwellers in you have there, I love the steel because steel's usable. Rolex to me is usability. Okay? So I love precious metal. I got some Padex, but it's not everyday usability. I always worry about them. My favorite Sky Dweller myself is the Sky Dweller Steel White Gold Bezel with the white dial. I think that is just perfect. Now, everyone goes crazy for the blue dial, but you know what? I love blue dials too. Blue dials matter, but sometimes it's, it doesn't, it doesn't I, don't, I don't have to have, I like the white dial. The white dial is amazing. So I've got to tell you, i got to tell you, I like your collection. I like what you've done. I think add some Rolex. Even if you have to pay retail, above retail, over retail, that's okay. I would also recommend David SW. He is a great dealer in America. Uh, and I would seriously say to you, seriously, I would say to you, Seriously say to you that add more Rolex. It's going to strengthen your collection. Um, now, I would say Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon. That is a top. That's an iconic Amiga. I'd get this house light. That's the plastic glass. Manual movement. Get that. That's a very good icon in the collection. I, I would add another Rolex. I personally think, looking at your collection there, I think you need a complicated Rolex. So a Milgauss and your Oyster Perpetual is a three-hander simple. I'd want to add a complicated, and an Explorer 2 gives you date, second time zone. That's a beautiful piece to have. So that's what I would be adding. Uh, I love your collection. And partly the reason why I support you not selling your tags is it's nice to know where you came from. It's really, really nice to know the flow. It tells a story. And I, I really like it. I really do like that. I think that is super, super, super duper, uh, super duper cool. I think it's really cool. That's very cool to be able to do there. So, 
that's certainly a uh, consideration that I, I would, would have there. I think it's coming along nicely. I think if you add Speedmaster Man on the Moon, add an Explorer 2, start adding things, nothing wrong with that. And I mean, look, I'll be honest with you, I think the Tag Hoyers, they're, they're, kind of, they're a young demographic, cool. They're a cool thing. Uh, and you've got a son. You know what? Let's be totally honest with you there. Tag Hoy is not garbage. You could even give one to your son without breaking the bank. If he graduates, if things go well, why not? It's kind of a cool watch like that. So I, I would say there's nothing wrong with Tag Heuer. That's a, that's, you know, to average people out there, that's a luxury watch. It's just that us watch fanatics are so snobby. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cop any shit on the, the tags there. I think in some ways you're lucky to have them. So, um, I gotta be honest with you. What do I think of the Sky Dweller? That's one of my grails. It's expensive. It's really expensive. I think the poor man's Sky Dweller is the, is the uh, Explorer 2, okay? The problem with the Sky Dweller is they're expensive. They're expensive. Uh, good to see you got your name on the list. You never know. You never know. If you don't ask, you'll never, you'll never know. So why not give it a shot? Great collection, really inspiring collection, great pieces, great things there. I think it's progressing nicely, and I like the stories. Keep all the boxes, keep all the brochures, the catalogs, keep them all together. Keep, look after that stuff. And I'd definitely maybe give one of the, the tags to your son. That's a great present. It's a great, nothing wrong with Tag Hoyer. I, I think they're uh, a, a good brand there. That's a, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I've been very brutal in the past, but, you know, uh, uh, I think if you look at them, they, they actually are decent. They're innovative. They're at a different price point to Rolex, but Rolex is so fucking expensive now. So, well done. Congratulations. Keep watching the channel. I love it. Definitely, yes, double tick. Speedmaster Man on the Moon. And I would say get a Explorer 2. I don't care what color. Get it. You'll love it. And you add quality to the collection. Okay, guys, that's the review for today. Guys, please like, subscribe, tell your friends. Don't be afraid to put some comments. What do you guys think of Tag Heuer? See, I think in many ways it's a great casual watch. Mm, it is. It's a great casual watch. Let me know what you think. Guys, remember, I can't survive on Google Ads. I desperately need more paid reviews because, let's be totally honest here, the YouTube is very, very, it's a hard way to make money. I'm in a small niche. I don't say positive things about many brands. Therefore, I don't get sponsorship deals. Guys, if you can get a paid review done, I'd really like it. Paid reviews, 50 US dollars. They take from about two weeks to about 30 days, depending on my schedule. And I want to be in the right mood to do the video right as well. Guys, tell me what you think. I love you guys, I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Hi guys, it's Archie Luxury. Guys, I want to talk to you about David SW. David SW, David SW. Guys, if you are in America, if you are looking for a Rolex watch of your dreams, in fact, if you're looking for a contemporary modern wristwatch, I strongly advise you to look at David SW. Guys, don't play the dealer games. 
Don't bring in chocolates or crispy creams for your dealer hoping to get a Rolex at retail. It's futile. Please guys, save your dignity. Keep some pride. Go to David SW. I would highly recommend David SW, David SW. If you're in America and you're looking for a watch, go to David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the YouTube sensation, the Paul Pluto channel. Guys, I need you to help me out, guys. I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I need you to request a paid review. 50 US dollars, look down in the description. 50 US dollars, re I will review your collection. I'll tell you what I think of it and I'll give you some pointers. The other thing is, guys, you can sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay a couple bucks a month, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you want. And it keeps me going on YouTube because, guys, I'm in a niche. Nobody can make money out of the views I get. The views are crap because it's a small specialized area and I don't talk about garbage for the sake of views. Guys, sponsor me on Patreon, look down below, and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.